Well, good afternoon. Glad to have you join me again as we gather for our midweek Bible study. And uh, really looking forward again to uh, just sharing some thoughts with you from God's Word and, and uh, that God might bless us through it. Uh, let's look to the Lord together. Father, thank you uh, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us in so many ways. And Lord, sometimes we lose sight of that. And like tonight's lesson, remind us, Lord, to always look upward, to trust you, to know that you are faithful, and to believe it in our own hearts. Meet with us to that end, I pray, and may the Spirit of God stir us up, to draw us close, that we might please you in all things. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Uh, just been on my mind this week, uh, you might have heard uh, uh, Chris Edmonds over at Camp Maranatha has passed away. And uh, they've been an active part of our ministry and influenced us in a good way for many years. Uh, as you know, I think it was a couple of years ago now, Chris had a stroke, kind of took him out of the leading of the ministry and uh, uh, been a very difficult uh, journey since that time. Uh, so while uh, many are missing him here, uh, he's got a warm, happy home going indeed in the day ahead. All right, uh, text today as we look at it uh, is in Acts chapter 7, uh, verse 9. The devotional uh, tonight is, But God. Acts 7, verse 9. There are many but gods in your life and in my life. And it's good to reflect on those and not to lose sight on the fact that God always is about adding that phrase to our lives, to our situations. I think at times in my life when things have looked difficult, even hopeless, and yet God himself, uh, God himself is... Um, come and uh, interjected himself. He's intervened. He's rescued. And uh, that's really the thought here tonight. In chapter uh, 7 of Acts, uh, here we have C Stephen's sermon. Uh, before he was stoned to death, he recounts the history of Israel and, uh, and how God had been faithful to his people. And he says in verse 9, And the patriarchs moved with envy sold Stephen, uh, excuse me, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him. Notice it again. The, the forefathers, the patriarchs, moved with envy. They sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him. It doesn't say, but God delivered him yet. But God was with him. And God's with us too. No matter what we're facing, what we're going through in life, we ought to be able to think in our minds, to, even if it's looking back and saying, you know, I've been here before, that's happened before, but God has made a difference then, and God will make a difference today. <clears throat> God was with Joseph. Back in chapter 50 of Genesis, verse 20, you remember years later when Joseph's brothers came to Egypt <clears throat> to, uh, for uh, refuge, really, for food, for relief, uh, that when, Jake, when Joseph saw them, uh, he realized all that they had done. There was no hiding the reality of the pain that they had brought his way. And yet Joseph said, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. You thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. There's another but God. Men meant evil, but God meant good. And I want you to know, think about it. In your life, maybe a friend right now going through a struggle, going through a difficulty, another Christian, we, we, we need to figure God into the equation, even if we can't figure the answer out. Because God makes a difference. God is with us, 
and he's able to do whatever he desires in that sense. What men thought to do to, to Joseph was overruled by God and what God determined to do. Because whether Satan or just plain old enemies in life, they may have all kinds of plans against us, but God determines the outcome. I, I uh, had this uh, written out here, man proposes, but God disposes. Brings me to a verse I like in the Proverbs 16.33, the lot is cast into the lap. The whole lot is just tossed on the lap. But, uh, we find here, the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Life may be cast into your lap, but what's going to become of what happens to you? What's going to become of those things, those circumstances, those events, even the hurts that we go through? The disposing of those things is the Lord's business. That's what he does. And we need to remember that because we have many times when things are just thrust upon us uh, that we certainly wouldn't ask for, that we shrink back even at the thought of having to deal with them. But don't count God out. Figure God into the equation of life. I looked that up. That phrase, but God, is used 43 times in the scripture. I'll just give you some of them if I can. Remember when, Joseph, uh, when Jacob called his wives, Leah and Rachel, and, uh, and he was getting ready to leave uh, the land of, it, of their father, and he said this to them, And your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. That was true. He'd been deceived by their father. He'd been inconsistent. He'd been uh, 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 unfaithful toward him as, an, as a worker. And, and, and he'd been truly wronged by their father. That was true. And, and when we figure God in, it doesn't mean that we have to make up a fairy tale to make it work. What it means is in the midst of our reality, God makes a difference, a better reality. And, they, and he said this, Your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. Kind of reminds us of the story of Job, doesn't it? Where Satan had brought all these things against Job. But God didn't let Satan touch him, hurt him. And neither did God. Jacob uh, was far from home, and at times it seemed he was far from God. But one thing for sure, God wasn't far from him. But God didn't allow Laban to hurt him. That's God's goodness in it. And again, even at a time of death, and many of our folks, I think, as I prepared the lesson, I thought how many have lost loved ones. And, uh, but even in our loss, even at a time of death, Genesis 48, 21, Israel, that was Jacob, so did Joseph, behold, I die but God shall be with you again. Uh, God shall be with you and bring you again into the land of your fathers. I'm going to die, but God shall be with you. Isn't that a comfort? Oh, well, none of us want to face the death of a loved one. <clears throat> Parent, spouse, child, friend. Had another friend die this weekend as well. Uh, when I began working at Word of Life Bible Club, she and her husband had uh, been a great influence, a great godly influence uh, in our lives. And uh, you know, But God is with us. Even death doesn't break that bond that we have with God. Don't forget that, because otherwise it can look like death is all we have. But dear friends, even if death takes away, God remains with us. I read in First Samuel, and it was twenty three fourteen. David is like we were looking at in our dwell reading uh, this morning. 
David is running from Saul, uh, taking refuge in the hill countries, up in the mountains and the caves. And, uh, and it says here that, uh, that uh, Saul sought him every day. Every day Saul came after David to hurt him, to destroy him. It says, but God delivered him not into his hand. God didn't allow it to happen. Same thing with our Lord Jesus Christ. When the enemy often came to, to uh, get Christ to, to kill him uh, earlier, uh, God just led him away. And, and that's what we see here uh, for David. Asaph, I thought of the sermon a few weeks ago that uh, Daniel preached and, uh, in Psalm 73. In verse 26 in that psalm, uh, he's just being open and saying, you know what, I had nothing left. He, he wrote, my flesh and my heart failed me. You have have times when you feel weak, overwhelmed, burdened by life to the point as a parent, husband, wife, Mama, Dad, you just don't feel like you have any more to give? Well, that's what Asaph apparently felt like as he became so discouraged looking around at the uncertainties and unfair things in life. And he said this, My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my life and my portion forever. But God, see how in each of these situations, whether it's difficulty or death or just here, discouragement, but God is my strength. He's my life. He's my lot. You see, we may not have everything, but we have God. And uh, certainly that was Asaph's confession. While things may feel like they're overwhelming to us, know this. God is over everything. Not only is God over everything, but God is over everything in our lives. There's nothing that concerns us that is not a concern to God. And there's nothing that's able to overpower us in that sense. No matter what comes, God is willing, God is able to overcome any of those things, overrule them in our lives. I went back to Philippians 2.13. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Maybe in your life, maybe you can think of a Christian friend today who is overwhelmed by things that none of us would want to face. Daily struggles, day in and day out. And it doesn't look like things are going to change for them or maybe for you. Is God able to work His will out in our lives? That was our dwell reading yesterday, I believe. I say dwell, sometimes it might be the daily bread because I try to do both readings each day, but, but it's Romans 12, 1 and 2. No matter what we're going through, God wants to prove His good and acceptable and perfect will in our lives. And God brings about his will even in the midst of our difficulties, even in the midst of bad things, evil things, like Joseph had said, you meant evil against me. How much evil comes against us today because of humanity? Even in families, there's so much ill will today. Sometimes it's brought against a family member without being asked for, if I can put it that way. Not deserved. And yet it comes anyway. Can a but God make a difference in that situation? When it looks like the marriage is going down the tubes, can we add a but God has something different in mind? When it looks like there's no money to be seen or had anywhere, can God make a difference in that? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. The Lord has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. 
so that we might boldly say, the Lord is my helper. We might be confident to say that. I'm hurting. I'm going through difficulties, but it doesn't remove the reality of the fact that the Lord is my helper. And, and the writer of Hebrews says that we should be able to say that with boldness. How can we have boldness when we're feeling pain? When we're going through uh, difficulties, when we're having burdens, uh, as we have at times? Because the Lord doesn't change. Don't count God out. Don't read your life story as if God is not involved, Christian, because God is very involved. 1 Corinthians 10.13. Let's go back there and look at that together if you have your Bible. It's a tremendous verse, and I hope you have it marked out uh, in your Bible. If not, it might be a good time to mark it if you're just listening in uh, today, but uh, we'll take time to read it again here. 1 Corinthians 10.13 is talking about Israel's temptation. We're talking about the situation in Hebrews last week where the Israelites were really suffering for their own foolishness much of the time in the wilderness, that is. And they suffered temptation. They suffered for it because they chose to not trust God, to trust themselves and to, to turn against God. But verse 13 says this, there's no temptation uh, taken you, but such as is common to man. No matter what we're going through, chances are you can look and be honest enough to say, you know, I'm not the first one to go through this. Maybe a Christian going through health issues, going through divorce, some difficulties, maybe the fallout from a friend, a lifelong friend, and things just don't seem to be coming together. Maybe death has visited. No matter what testing you're facing. It's common to men. This is part of the fabric of life, isn't it? But here it says this. Here's another one of our but gods. While the temptation uh, is common to men, but God is faithful. Faithful to who? Men. When? When we're in difficulties, in times of testing. God is always faithful. The reason Israel failed isn't because God was unfaithful to them. It's because they were unfaithful to God. Who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will, with the temptation, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. It is God, again, like with Asaph, who gives the strength, the ability, the way out. That's our God. No matter where we are, it may look like we're in straits. It may look like we're between a rock and a hard place. But just at that time, God can make a difference. He did do that for Israel, didn't he? At the Red Sea, when he led them out of Egypt. Indeed, that's what God did for them. That's what God will do for us. I thought when the Amalekites came together and had the upper hand against Israel, Joshua and the soldiers down on the battlefield below, just then God called a Moses, Aaron and her, to go up on the mountain and pray. God may be using us to pray concerning the battles in other people's lives. And as we pray, but God makes a difference. God gave the Israelites, who are ill-equipped comparatively, the victory. He gave them the victory. And friends, he'll give us the victory too. Not because of who we are, but because of who God is. Indeed, he is our God. When the evil men came against Joseph, his brothers came against Joseph to make him a prisoner. God made him a prime minister. When the betrayers in our lives, the Judases in our lives, come to bring us to a bad place, when they mean it for death, the Judas dies. But Jesus rises again. But God raised him up. But God. And God can raise us up too. And God can change our situation. He may not, but he can. One thing for sure. 
While God may not reverse the circumstances of our lives, we can know this. God is with us. He's with us all along the way, all along the journey, and we can know that. While we have an adversary, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, we always have an advocate with the Father who wins every case on our behalf. He'll never let us fail in that sense. Oh, yes, he may allow us to go through difficulties, but even in those difficulties that we all face in this life, God will make a way for us to escape. I like Ephesians 3.20. <clears throat> Ephesians 3.20 reads this way. <clears throat> now unto him that is able to do exceeding, exceeding abundantly above. I like that. You couldn't get much greater than that. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Chances are, even in our difficulty, we're much like Peter. We're just screaming out, Lord, save us. We don't know what we need. We don't know what to ask for. Now, let me, let me apply this to us for a minute. That verse said, uh, Unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to his power that works in us. Can you think to a time in your past, as you look back over your own Christian life, a time when it looked like you were on the losing end, that everything was against you in the situation, and maybe it was, that there's no way you could win, you didn't even know if you could get through it, but God was with you, but God came and changed the circumstances, but God came and changed you? Can you think back to your own life story? I know we all can, can't we? How many times did it look hopeless from our perspective? But God made a difference. I thought it was this way. I didn't think it would ever change, but God came. I didn't see a purpose to live, but God came, but God came. Friends, that's my testimony. How good God is. We fail, we sin, we struggle, but God does what he comes. Convicts us, draws us near again, and then wonder of wonders, he blesses us blesses us far beyond anything that we might ever imagine. That is who our God is. So if you feel like you're in Joseph's pit, or maybe Joseph's prison house, and there's no way out, remember this. But God is with you too. And God is faithful. But God is faithful to make a way. One thing for sure, God hasn't left us. No, I'll never leave you or forsake you, we read, that we may boldly say, Lord, thank you. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Pray it's an encouragement to your heart. Maybe you'll be able to use this as a bit of an encouragement to others. But one thing for sure, let us always Always, always be confident that God is with us, that God is with the believer, no matter what we face on this pilgrim journey. Well, thanks for joining me. Have a great uh, rest of the day. Let's pray. Father, thanking you again for this study tonight. What a tremendous reminder to us. Lord, we look at our lives in the horizontal plane. And Lord, sadly, we often look at our circumstances as if we're talking to the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. We don't look up. We don't remember, Lord, it's, it's you who wants to work out your salvation in our lives to accomplish your good and your pleasure, the pleasure of your will in our lives. So Lord, in the midst of the darkness, 
the difficult days, may we understand and may we put our faith in the God who makes a difference always. And Lord, may you make a difference in our hearts, in our minds, in our livings on this day. We pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Going to be away for a few weeks now on vacation. Uh, we're going to be up on the main coast for a part of it. Just got a beautiful little place set aside there. So we're looking forward to that, Lord willing. And uh, we'll see you back here the beginning of next month. So God bless you. See you next time.